I'm Karen Hodgins, creator of Math Medley Family Math Night, and in this video I'm going to share with you the collaborative project that we did at my last Math Medley event where we created a community geode, and here is the result. Isn't that beautiful? Um, so just as a reminder, a geode looks like a regular rock, but when you break it open, it's lined with crystals. So a regular rock, Break it open, lined with crystals. Regular rocks, break it open, lined with crystals. Now obviously these crystals um, are colored um, and they get their color from the heat and the minerals that are present when they're forming. Now I got the idea to do this um, project when I learned that the school where I was doing the event has a science docent program that's run by the parents. And I thought it would be really cool to tie in their science docent program with um, the Family Math Night event. So um, one of their units was on rocks and minerals, and um, I thought that doing something with crystals would be super fun. So that's how I got the idea of the um, geodes. Um, now I'm gonna talk about how I did the project, um, and then we're gonna get into some uh, wonderful geometry vocabulary, but first I wanna talk about um, a little bit about crystals. So crystals are minerals, um, and these particular minerals have their atoms organized in a very um, orderly and distinctive way. In fact, um, the shape of the crystal mirrors the internal um, organization of the atoms. So you can see here, that is a beautiful hexagon and that mirrors how the atoms are um, organized. Um, so crystals fall into um, three groups. Okay, um, or they're grouped into three classes, the crystal families, crystal systems, and the lattice systems. And they're all very closely intertwined. The differences have to do with their symmetries and um, the way that the atoms are arranged. So what I've got listed here are the crystal families. So the cubic is also called isometric, um, tetragonal, hexagonal, I'm gonna talk about trigonal in just a second, orthorhombic, monoclinic, and triclinic. And you can see here that I have samples of each one of those. Okay, now those are the six crystal families. The crystal systems breaks this one here into hexagonal and trigonal. And I wanted to include um, for this project the crystal systems because this trigonal here, an example of that is this one that I showed you earlier. This happens to be quartz. Okay, and it falls right here under the um, trigonal crystal system. And most geodes actually, uh, the most common um, crystals found in them are quartz, celestite, and calcite. So I wanted to make sure that I included the quartz in here. And those three, by the way, fall under the hexagonal, trigonal, and orthorhombic um, categories. And I really wanted to make sure that we had trigonal represented in there. Now these other um, um, uh, crystals uh, can also be found obviously in ge geodes, uh, they're just not as common, but I didn't want to limit myself to just those three, and you can see how beautiful it is having samples of all of them in there. Okay, so um, what I did at uh, the event is I had my long um, table set up, my cafeteria's table set up, and at one end I decided to uh, provide a variety of crystals for students um, and their parents to look at. Um, so I happen to like rocks and I have a very small rock collection so I brought it out and um, I also had um, donated to the classroom um, a long time ago um, these. These are called loops and they're like little magnifying glasses um, but what's really cool about them is you can see how they're kind of uh, flurry out at the bottom there. They, I've got my glasses on, so I'm not going to do this. Um, but um, you can actually um, put this on your eye and, and kind of scratch your eye up a little bit like this so that it can hold the loop um, so that you can have both hands free. So um, this gives kids an opportunity then to look at some of the really cool patterns in geometry in some of these um, uh, crystals here. If you don't have loops, a uh, little magnifying glass um, will work uh, uh, as well. 
Um, so I also had at the table, um, the science docent program has trays of a whole variety of rocks. So we had a, a few of those trays available for, for participants to look at as well. But I want to share a, a few of these with you. So you saw my quartz there, and here's um, some more quartz, and it's just so cool. Um, and then I've got this one here. This is my pyrite, okay, and um, it's in the shape of a cube. So you can see right there, cubic. Um, and you can t talk about things like the face. Okay, the face is the flat surface there. So how many faces does my cube have? How many edges? That's this part right here, right? Where those faces meet, that's the edge. And then of course the point there, those are the, um, the vertices um, connecting there. So they can, uh, participants can talk about that when they, when they um, look at these uh, crystals. Then here is my, um, my octahedron. Look how beautiful that is. I love the color of that. Now you can see that my tip is missing down there. Um, in fact, I have my little mini octahedron right here, which is perfect. Okay, um, can you see that? Octa. Okay, so it's got eight faces on there and they're all triangles. How beautiful is that? Um, and then I have my aragonite right here and it kind of looks like a whole bunch of little columns. Okay, totally cool. Um, and again, they can talk about the, the shapes in that. Um, I also have my rocks and minerals book available for them to look at, and you can grab a whole bunch of other books from, um, from the library as well. Um, because I like my rocks and I wanna make sure I get my rocks back, I have my station facilitator um, be sure that I have a checkoff sheet with all the rocks that are available. Um, on the table at night and then um, he or she just checks them off and to make sure that they get them all back at the end of the evening and then you know um, she kept an eye on them during the event as well okay so that's at one end of the table now the rest of the table is filled with the project and for that you're going to need um, a whole bunch of um, colorful pens and if you've seen my other videos and you know I really like Sharpies you're going to need scissors and I like to have as many scissors as I plan on having participants at the station so I usually put out about 15 pair of scissors and then of course tape uh, you're going to need a, a hot glue gun and this is for the station facilitator I'll talk about more about that in a second but I also have a backup glue gun because you just never know then depending on your facility and where your table is located you may need an extension cord um, and then of course you're going to need the nets now the net is the two-dimensional representation of the three-dimensional crystal so on our website at familymountainite.com under the resources section you can get the pdfs of each one of these um, these nets and the table tents that i'm going to talk about in just a minute so you can see that there's two nets per page so when i have these run off and copies made um, i have them made on cardstock because it's a little bit easier to turn the nets into um, the crystals um, when the paper's a little bit thicker. So all you're gonna do is, you know, run those off and then you're gonna cut them in half and then I spread these out on the table and they can choose whichever ones um, they want to color in. Um, you're also going to need um, a ruler and ballpoint pens and the ballpoint part is important because we want that to be really firm there. Um, and where this comes in is after they have colored in their um, crystal, and obviously that one's not colored in, but after they've colored in their crystal, then they're going to take the ruler and they're going to um, go over all of those black lines that they see there. So they're scoring it because that's going to make it easier for them to fold into um, their crystal and then tape that. Okay, so it's easy. Okay. Um, so also at the table, I have two different kinds of table tents, and um, I have several of these. Um, I think I may have had six or seven of these spread out on the table. Um, this first one here just describes the project. So it goes through the steps. The first thing you need to do is choose one of the crystal nets and color it in. The second thing you need to do, cut along the perimeter and so forth. So this serves as um, steps in the process for them. Um, in case the station facilitator is busy doing something else. Okay, and again, these are available on the website. And then the other one that I have um, talks about the, um, uh, the shapes that they're going to see. So here's the geometry, here's the math that they're gonna be talking about because 
on those nets at the very top, the first thing it says is, before coloring your crystal, discuss the shapes you see in the net. And that's this. So obviously, this is um, the cubic. This is going to turn into a cube. But you can talk about that. You can say, well, gee, this is a square. You know, it has two sets of parallel sides. It has um, four right angles. You know, um, all sides are equal length. And, and it's also, you know, um, a rhombus and a parallelogram. And they're going to get that information from looking at um, this table type. That's going to help them. Um, you can also on here these tabs, although they're not going to be a part of the the uh, the crystal when it's done. But it, you know, right there, there looks that's a trapezoid, and they can talk about that as well. And where does that fit into um, in terms of categories and so forth? Because some of these um, ge geometric shapes they overlap. You know, a square is also a rectangle, is a parallelogram, it's also a, a rhombus, and so we need to get kids to see it um, uh, that way as well. So that's a good opportunity for that. Um, Okay, so once they've, um, they've colored in their, um, their net and they've taped it, they hand this to the station facilitator. And like I said earlier, the station facilitator is in charge of that hot glue gun. And what he or she is doing is putting together um, that beautiful um, geode. Now, let me tell you how I made this. Um, I took a cardboard box and I cut off, um, I cut down the corners of them, and then I took those corners and I overlapped them and I curved it up. And that's what this made, the, I did that four, you know, on all four um, corners, and I, that's what makes the, the curve here. And then I took some tissue paper and I scrunched it up and I put it inside um, the bottom, and that's what give it, gave it kind of that bowl shape, because then I put, um, I got a large piece of black felt and I lined it with the black felt, and then I got um, gray paper, scrunched up the gray paper, and um, made that to look like um, the roughness of the rock on the outside. So that's how I made um, the, the rock part. If I did it again, I would probably try something a little different. I would get a, a plastic bowl, a cheap plastic bowl, and I would do the same thing. I would line that cheap, because uh, it's already kind of in the shape of, of a rock. I would line that um, instead of using um, a box. Just another idea um, on how to make that. And, and if you come up with, a, with, a, with an idea too, please let me know, because I really would like to know that. So, um, okay, so that's how I, I made that. And then, of course, um, the station facilitator uh, puts all of those um, beautiful crystals in there. And everybody is represented. Um, in that, and that's just what I love about that. Their personalities are reflected there. So it's a super uh, fun project. Um, so uh, have fun.